call. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the February 8th, 2024, Norwalk, City of Norwalk Public Library Board of Directors meeting. Present, uh, we have Alex Knopp, Mary Mann, Laurel Peterson, Patsy Brescia, Janie Williams, and Sherelle Harris. As well as yourself. And, and myself. Um, I assume everyone's had a chance to look at the minutes. Would anyone like to move their approval? I'll move approval to the January 11th minutes. Any comments? If not, can I have a second? That's second. All in favor to approve the minutes? Aye. Aye. I need to abstain. I wasn't here. Okay, great. Thanks, Laurel. Um, okay. So, as you all know, we have uh, finally secured ownership of 11 Belden, a quarter of an acre parking lot behind the library. This is absolutely terrific news for Norwalk residents and um, very necessary for any future renovation, modernization of the library. As many of you know, this did not happen overnight. Well, it took eight years, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was... I put six plus years in the making, probably eight. It's <laughs> close. A long time. Mm -hmm. And um, at this time, I I just like to thank the former board chair Alex Knopp for his leadership and vision oh, in preserving um, the property for this eventual acquisition. Thank I you. would also like to thank past board uh, board members Patsy Brescia, Ralph Bloom. Janie Williams, Mary Mann, and Tom Cullen for their support and advocacy over the years. This has been on our agenda for many, many, <laughs> many times. And I'd also like to thank um, Mayor Rilling and his team, especially Corporation Council, for their assistance in this. Um, so, uh, Lana, can I just, I think for the record, it's good to just also acknowledge that it's almost simultaneously with the city acquiring, uh, about to acquire the um, first district. Oh, that's property. next on my comments. Oh, for oh, sure. okay. <laughs> right. I'm sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. But that is mm -hmm. a very good point, Patsy. I just wanted to, um, before we move to that, I just wanted to say as far as next steps go, um, Sherelle um, uh, will be meeting with Jim Travers at the Parking Authority on um, on any updates or um, to figure out the 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 lot and how it's going to be um, used or um, improved for library pat patrons. Um, and I I have one I guess last question just for the city um, and which we'll be asking or maybe Sherelle you have some insight into this um uh i don't know whether the city will be um mm -hmm. leasing the eagles lot in the coming year or not so maybe um if we could find out um exactly. you and I, so I know it's, out. um it's happening for this next year hopefully they won't take it out but um it's in for 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 2024-25 okay but I, I just, after um not sure it is in for 24-25. We did put it in for 24-25. Um, I just wanted to stop here and see if anyone would like to add anything further to this. Yeah, I would. I'm going to thank you. First, thanks for the kind remarks. It was eight years. And people seem to have forgotten that we did stop the construction of uh, 59 condo units in the back there that allows the library to go forward. So... I regard it as uh, avoiding the death penalty for the library's future, and I found very uh, good for the city. Well, I was a little puzzled, um, Sherelle, maybe this involves you also, uh, because when we acquired that lot originally through the lease, uh, the parking authority took over the management of it, including paying for the repaving, the striping, the 
uh, dealing with some of the uh, fire lane issues to make sure that a fire truck could get in and turn around and so on. And I noticed in the capital budget, uh, which we're going to get to later, but this involves it. So since we're on the topic now, that um, we're going to be paying through the library capital budget for the uh, making the Sonor Library lot ADA compliant, uh, which I think obviously is an important priority. Um, but there's nothing in here about any expenditures for the Belden lot. And assuming it's not going to just be left as it is, though I think we acknowledge that conditions have changed, that the courthouse is not open the way it was when we first got to lot seven years ago. Uh, and therefore, the question of whether we need to have gated parking or not, you know, is a legitimate topic of of conversation. Um, I think it'd be important to, to inquire whether the parking authority is once again going to take over management of the lot and pay for uh, bring it up to, uh, you know, its appropriate status in terms of handicap spaces, striping, uh, in and out, uh, fire fire truck issues, and and so on. So, Sherelle, maybe you could add that to your conversation with uh, Jim Travers, but I think you should also involve with the parking authority also. So I remember even last meeting or two meetings ago. Um, we were talking about Sono, but you also brought up the main library as well. And um, we had discussed, you know, the possibility of waiting until we renovate. But I'm certainly happy to bring it up again. Because yeah, I don't, I don't recall bringing it up. We were going I, to renovate. I didn't recall that. What I recall is we we talked about putting in an electric vehicle yes. charging station there, but I don't recall anything about waiting. Um, and in fact... You know, we really shouldn't wait because, there, again, there are issues of oh, safety, sure. you know, safety, uh, uh, the traffic flow, I say the fire truck, the handicapped spaces that, that, you know, I mean, even if we were to agree tomorrow on an architect, the actual groundbreaking wouldn't take place for, a while. for years anyway. So, nope, happy to bring it yeah. up. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Well, yeah. While we're on parking, um, from in the minutes, we talked about the need to talk to, to get on a schedule with the parking authority regarding the South Norwalk protecting the spaces in the Webster lot. And I, I think we need to move on that uh, right away to get it in the record so that it doesn't get lost. So that because um, uh, we had done it with the previous developer and now we have a new developer. And so I think we need to schedule uh, a meeting with the parking authority or the ability to talk to the parking authority ab about the South Norwalk um, parking spaces in the Webster lot. For sure. Um, so it's important for us to do that ASAP. Mm -hmm. Will do. Um, also, I, I have one comment about it too. Um, so Initially, we had these gates and we had... Um, oh, you're talking about it, Belden now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going back to Belden. Okay. And I was flip <laughs> uh, back to Belden. We had the gates and then we had these um, cards that you would get validated, I think, at the... Uh, and then somehow the gate stopped working and it was free parking. I feel strongly that that should be free parking. And uh, for library patrons... Um, we have a you know free access to books <laughs> i don't think people should have to come pay to go to the to the library so um i don't know if sherelle if you want to bring that up or if we have me you know if there's a point in which maybe um we ask jim to come over to to talk to us or you know um and i don't know how other people feel about that on the yeah. board i think it's important to um, present the free parking, which we have now. So I will just say the gates were a fiasco from the beginning. Um, they didn't work and not having someone on site, um, like our, our um, custodians were all, always out there trying to help and 
get the gate up. But the parking authority has been very, very, um, but, you know, they've been very understanding. So we just left the gate up and, you know, they have free parking now. I don't know, and I'm hoping that they will not um, begin to number our parking lots um, for parking because they have that, 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 um, they have the station on Mott Avenue. So um, I have not heard anything as far oh, as- we, we need to make contact with them and find out what's going on. Yeah. Well, just to add to the discussion, um, <clears throat> the reason why there was a gate there originally and the parking was free for library patrons yeah. Yeah, was that the courthouse was very active with the uh, cases every day. And don't forget the uh, the Eagles lot is really overbooked. Uh, those spaces are rented by uh, the medical building that's next to it. Um, I don't know whether or not the funeral parlor rents any spaces, uh, and they're very small spaces. So, I mean, again, I, I think conditions have changed. The reason we left the gate up was because of COVID. Uh, nobody was coming to the library anyway, so there was no question about parking. But I think there there is an issue there of whether or not the uh, publicly available spaces outside of the library are adequate for the business uses on Mott Avenue, because we don't want to end up with a situation in which people decide to cancel their leases for parking spaces with the Eagles and simply park for free in the library spaces and deny the access to library patrons that we have fought for. So again, I think this time is why we have a parking authority. They can specialize in that kind of study of of uh, the commercial uses, the uh, traffic flow during the day. But uh, so it, it's a, we have to re review it, but there was a reason why it was gated we provided free parking for library patrons, but we were able to preserve it for the library and not have the courthouse or the businesses use it. Now things have changed. Let's let's have them relook at it. But it's it's not so simple, I think, as just keep it free and open because then we still might be denied those spaces because businesses will probably migrate into using it. Yeah, I, I hear <laughs> that. But I'm just saying for our I, I don't know what the solution would be, but I, I just think for our patrons, it should be free. So, yeah, well, well, agree. yeah. yeah. But, but I want to jump on this too, because both, um, um, both Alex and I have worked a lot on this issue. And, and part of the gate issue was that it was not installed in a, in a location where, where you could pull your car in really off of the, the street. And it was, it, it, it didn't work and that was part of the reason also it was a safety issue so that those that me me uh, mechanism would need to be moved but it's important for us to establish with the port parking authority that we're focused on this issue and it doesn't come up a year from now after the fact and then they say well why didn't I, why didn't you tell us when we took over the property so we need to be on target with it have a full discussion with them about that as well as the concern for South Norwalk. Yeah, so we're on the record and, you know, we've established our our credentials and concern is. and needs. So yeah. so let me just, um just as far as next steps go on this, so we um, are going to request, re request to be on the parking authority agenda. Is that what we... Or, well, if we call them and see how they want to handle it. Do they want to handle it with us? Uh, you know, on a staff level, or do they want us to do a discussion at, a, at, at their meetings or whatever? Okay. But we need to get on the record with it strongly. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, they have a budget too. And so, you know, if we're not articulating our needs and we come a year or 18 months from now and they say, well, we already did our budget for the next year. You know, why didn't you tell us up front, you know? Yeah. So we need to be proactive. Sounds good. Okay, so um, moving into uh, three building. 
I'm sorry, does anyone else have anything before I move on? Okay, so um, piggybacking on what Patsy was saying, um, the timing of this is, um, is in kind of in concert with uh, the act, not the, well, the closing of Three Belden, um, the, the, um, the legal acquisition of that building. Um, I did touch base with the um, economic and community development, um, Jess Bonacek over there. And she, uh, she uh, reiterated that um, the closing is, is on track for March, they're just uh, a corporation council is just working with their attorneys on some um, on some final kind of closing details. Uh, so hopefully we can expect some some good news then. Um, and you know once once that happens, we're going to be in a really terrific spot. We have, after many years, secured a footprint um a contiguous footprint um from for which to proceed now into kind of uh, a design or a planning phase you know an architectural and phase so um so i think after the closing we should definitely regroup with um jessica and alan and um, as of now, it looks like, based on um, based on my conference conversation with um, with Jessica, we had two point two million dollars in both the economic development and um, and library budgets combined for architectural services. Um, Eight hundred thousand is being held for. The eleven Belden parking lot, so that brings us to one point four. So with that one point four, um, that they, she seems to think that that's enough to start with phase one, of an RFP which will last over you know about a year of working closely with you know the staff for spouse. Uh, space allocation and community outreach and um, whatever is required for the design. If there's anything else required for the design, that would be requested in the following um, the following year, the 25, 25, 26. Um, and then of course they have in their budget for the 26, 27, the $25 million for the actual build. Um, so, you know, we will be in conversation with the mayor and his team about that. Um, and so hopefully we can regroup and get some more kind of flesh out some of these, this timeline um, in the next month or two. Uh, how, yeah, I have a, a comment on that. That's all great news. Uh, and in preparation for moving forward, um, I was thinking it would be a good idea if we uh, got out uh, of of uh, the moss balls, um, the study that we did, I don't know how many years ago, six, eight years ago, um, for the mm -hmm. expansion, and that we actually you know, refresh our memory on it and comment and see then and use that as a base for what we as a board um, can do to um, help this whole process. Because uh, I, I remember some of it, but I certainly don't remember it all. So I think that would be a great exercise. And we have new new trustees also. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, we have the building plan and a lot is laid out. I mean, a lot of things have changed. Um, yeah, and, and the research, the you know, remember the, yeah. the reach out piece. So, yep. That needs oh, to I, be can, done. I can, I uh, can, go ahead. No, yeah, no. That no. needs to be redone, yeah. I can circulate that to everybody and maybe we uh, take some time um, at the next board meeting to talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
just two other comments. One is the the uh, the, fir the the person who did that uh, play for us has been named the new president of the American Library Association. Leslie Berger, really? Yes. Wow. So that's quite an honor. Yeah. Um, uh, second, um, Moyna, I, I, I suggest we be a little cautious. I'm not sure it affects anything that we do, but we'd be a little cautious about this $800,000 price for the parking property. Um, the way the law works is that after the city acquires it by eminent domain, the city deposits its estimate of what the price will be in a bank account that is held by the court. Milligan puts in his amount. And if there's a dispute, which I assume there will be, knowing some of the participants, and then the court goes through a fact-finding process, the parties can bring in their uh, experts in terms of appraisals, uh, and then in the end, the judge makes a decision. So the $800,000 is what the city has deposited in the court for its estimate of the uh, cost of the land. The judge may determine something different. My guess is he probably he or she probably will. I hope it's a very close to $800,000, of course. But uh, even if the court were to up that by a substantial amount, it would still leave enough in the economic development account for us to go ahead with an RFP. But I just wouldn't get too locked into that amount because it probably will change and the city will use whatever amount of our money uh, after the 800,000 was taken out to uh, uh, fill up whatever the Close court is. The the property, the deal? property was worth. So, as I say, it, I don't think in all probability, I mean, even if we were to double it, we would still go ahead with an RFP of some kind. Um, obviously, I hope it's close to 800000 but we don't know. I don't know the timing of that. I'm obviously not involved in it, but I just be a little cautious thinking that the property was bought for 800000 and that's the end of it. Yeah. That's a, it's a, very, it's a very good point. And, um, and when that happens, it would be nice to get some kind of a uh, uh, um, a sandwich board or something in in the library or outside of the library, you know, letting everybody know that we now have this property. Yeah. Have control of this property, you know. Patsy, can so, I ask you a question about uh, three building? Yeah. You know, when you and I were discussing this with uh, Mayor Zulo in his office, uh -huh. A number of times, um, the thought was that the district had to hold a referendum on uh, yeah closing of property. Do you know whether that's the? the you know, I'm not sure if it is. And then the question then it wasn't a sale; it was more of a gift at that point. As you will recall, we were trying to. Um, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, and then it turned into uh, uh, the the district asking for you know some some money for the swap of the land. So it could be two different criteria. Yeah, but I, I, I think disagree. that's a great question, and we can, yeah, we can check that out. <laughs> anyway, big progress! Congratulations, yeah. everybody. Yes, it's been a long haul. Um, okay, Sherelle, passing, it, passing the baton. Hello, everyone. Um, hi, Sherelle. Um, Hello, before okay. Sherelle speaks, can I make a comment? Yeah, I of just course. want to congratulate Sherelle. I believe you have an anniversary this month of a lot of years with the North Public Library. How many years is it? I always go from my daughter's birth. Um, 25, I think. Wow. Yeah, I was reading something. And I was like, February 1st, Sherelle came to the library 
you know. Um, so congratulations on, on many years of service um, and the fact that we appreciate you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Woo Fantastic. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Are we meeting? We're meeting in person next. We need to do yeah. some celebrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no cake. Fruit. Sorry, what day was it? February 1st? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I, I think I took eight months maternity leave and it's February. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a big deal. 25 years. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, okay, so anyway, good evening, everyone. Uh, first things first, uh, the you you received the email that we did receive the waiver, um, so we can move forward with the cafe RFP whenever purchasing is ready. Um, I sent the waiver to purchasing Lamont and Allen Lowe on January eighteenth, and I also followed up um, last night. So just waiting to hear from them as to when we will be able to get started with that process. Any questions, Patsy? Okay. You look like you had a question mark on your face. Just tired. <laughs> I just look tired. <laughs> um, so next, the capital budget. So there were some adjustments. Um, so Tom went through. Tom Ellis, who is just phenomenal to work with. Um, Tom Ellis went through and made some, uh, some adjustments. Um, Lamond went through, and then he and I went through again. So um, the main library ADA compliant door handles, rather than do the full project with all of the doors, um, we thought we would do the, um, the sliding doors. So where we have the, the first set of sliding doors, and then there's that opening where you have to pull the doors that is just falling off the hinges. So that would also be um, a sliding door. And um, Neil um, said that they can, you know, do other things to make the doors compliant for now until we uh, renovate. So rather than the 44,200, that would come to 16,000. And the Sono ADA compliance, um, that will stay at the full 46,362. So, uh, Cheryl, can we, do you want to wait till you go through the whole thing or should we ask you questions about it? Oh, sure, yeah. Each item? Um, is there a reason why that shouldn't be a parking authority expense if we can? And I'll tell you why I'm asking. Um, Unfortunately, one of the things that was cut out was the outdoor furniture for the library, main library, which is something that patrons will see, use, and is really for their benefit. So I was trying to think if there's ways to move money around to preserve the opportunity to buy that furniture. And I'm wondering why are we paying? I agree that the lot needs to be made compliant, no question. And that'll help us with the EV chargers. But why are we paying for it rather than the parking authority? Well, the parking authority handles the main library lot. Um, at present, from my understanding, the second taxing district still owns that lot. The parking authority doesn't really have anything to do, to my knowledge, Mary can confirm, uh, with that mm -hmm. lot. Um, so as far as the main library outdoor furniture, that was going to be a request. <laughs> in the foundation meeting. Yeah, and actually um, I am planning to make a suggestion in that meeting that we do two things. The, the benches for uh, uh, Belden and uh, furniture for the little waiting room in Sono as you come in, uh, whatever it is you need there, you know, by the elevator mm -hmm. that we um, look into both of those projects um, for, both branches. So I hope people will support that idea, but I, I think it's really important that that we do something uh, nice for both branches. Okay, so moving on. Um, Alex, did you have any other questions? No, not about that. Okay, um, so moving on. 
Um, the library van that this was um, a sour spot with me, but the library van um, was removed, and we figured, you know, if the if something goes wrong, you know, that we'll have to the city will have to purchase another van um, at that point. But we the library van was removed. The Sono security alarm and intercom system um, remained at full price. We have no choice. Um, but to do that, uh, we did the main library um, this particular year, and the Sono um, needs to be upgraded 2024-25. Um, so that stayed at the, at the full 11,000. The security cameras um, were reduced, but I do want to remind that Neil did say that the company from whom we received the quotes, they were on the very high end and the city normally when they go out to budget, we end up you know, with the lowest bidder. So that was cut tremendously. Um, Lamond is trying to, I guess his um, ADA budget was cut and he really, he wanted to um, preserve you know, some parts of that. So um, we cut this one to, so for both buildings, it would be 18,000, uh, let's see, eighteen thousand thirty-six and fifty cents um, for both buildings. And so, even I think if we do the indoor, and maybe we can do the outdoor next year. But at least if we do the, you know, the interior where the people are coming in, we can see who's coming in. So that way, if something happens, um, we know internally, um, you know, mm -hmm. we'll be at fault. Yeah, but but are they? Uh, bidding on just the inside, or are they going to bid both and see what happens? I think we're going to bid both together. To yeah, see yeah, together. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not back off that if we, unless we are forced to. Yeah, right. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So we need we to bid need... both together to see if we can get some discounts that way. That was the plan anyway. I broke it out because yeah. you all wanted it broken yeah. out, but the plan was to bid it, you know, at once to see if we can get some discounts there. Um, yeah. Uh, newspaper digitization remains the same, and I was able to pronounce it because I don't have my my Invisalign in. <laughs> so, um, but that remains the same. You know, we don't want to touch that. And as a matter of fact, we we just got um, the people who are redoing the the what is it the Wall Street Theater. Um, you know, contacted me about, you know, they wanted the old building and, you know, how the building had been, had changed over the years. So I was able to refer them to our history room and touted our digitization. So we definitely do not want to touch that. What, um, was that the Wall Street Theater or the Palace Theater? It was, I thought it was the Wall Street. I because the Palace Theater people are looking for uh, information also. Also, that are you know the what? company. I, think I copied you guys on the executive team on it. It might have been the palace. Well, I got it from another another person. I'll go back and look I at think, it. yeah. But I, thought yeah. It was, I thought it was the Wall Street. So maybe both. Um, well, yeah. Because I think, wasn't the palace, aren't, isn't a church doing something with the palace? Yeah, yes. Next, next to the old city hall. Yes. All right, so technology upgrades um, originally was 33,700. We're now at uh, 23,700. And basically we just, um, we cut out one major that I spoke with Lori. She wanted to keep um, most of the technology, um, the, what was it? The IQ, I forget the name of it. But um, so we just cut out um, basically one of the bigger items and she was okay with that. So we're down to 23,700. And then the main- Items of, you mean of things that were digitizing? Yeah, so, no, 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 no. These were the technology upgrades. So oh, okay, mass, okay. Yeah, no, yep. we're, not, Sorry. we're not touching the digitization at all. Okay, all right. So these were, so we'll still, you know, get the maps and, um, you know, the, the large type printer and, and that sort of thing. It was the the item that would tell us how we're using our collection. Yeah. So that one we said, you know, we can we can push that off to next year. 
Um, and then the main library furniture um, at the 11,000, we, we removed that. Are any of these upgrades that we can fold into the um, into the recreation of the library? In other words, when we when we rebuild, right? Are some of these things that we can just add to that list as necessary? You mean the technology upgrades or just overall? Yeah, well, I was thinking technology upgrades in particular because a lot of the other things are building related, for sure. um, but. Oh, for, yeah, all of the technology will be able to transfer over to the new library. But it will probably be different than and need to be changed because with another project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, but seriously, I'm, I have a meeting scheduled next week on that same concept for another building project I'm working on. And, you know, we have to redo it after going out to bid two, two years ago, you know. So I'm pretty sure we will be revisiting that mm -hmm. and we should stay focused on it. There's a term for that. It's called manufactured obsolescence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Time marches on. <laughs> yeah, but it's a way to get upgrades that you need, right? If you sure. fold them into the project, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I see what you mean, yes. Well, technology waits for no man. No one. Keeps Our woman. <laughs> Our woman. <laughs> Let's not be sexist here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay. We lost Alex with that. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, did he laugh or not? No, he, he's I, I think he I, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> Were you feeling? Oh, anyway, <laughs> could go on. <laughs> All right. Great to be so, this wonderful company. Just fine. <laughs> okay, so moving on, um, the main library um, carpet replacement. Um, so um, the gentleman came back red the red carpet. Um, they came back with a bid, and this was um, someone Neil brought in from Guardian. Well, Neil from Guardian brought in red thread. Um, they came in. Um, originally, the budget was a little over but they came in at 123,206, um, which is you know, just, just a tad below what we were approved for that process. However, um, they were under the impression that we were ready to begin, but we still have to go out to bid. And that was one of the questions that Lamont um, did follow up with, with Neil to find out if they'd gone out to bid and they have not. So I will be... Um, just finding out where we are in the process with going out to bid. So that's basically an uh, an estimate. Mm -hmm. Which normally means they're not a bidder. No, I think he's planning on, on bidding. Will tends to use um, Red Thread quite a bit. Um, you know, he Red Thread did... Um, the carpet, he, they've done most of the carpeting projects um, for okay. the library. So, um, but I, I definitely know they're planning to bid. So we don't, we don't have a sense yet of when. We don't, and I was under the impression too, so I apologize that, you know, we were ready to go with them, but we still have to go out to bid. Um, just a question, Sherelle, did, are they the ones that did the carpeting for the Sono um, upstairs conference room? They did. I wasn't happy with their work. Okay. <laughs> this person that they have now, I, I, I agree. And the person that um, we were working with, he was not very pleasant. But um, this person, I don't know if they've got a new person or this is just um, another employee. But um, very nice to work with. Um, they seem to dot all their I's and cross their T's. Um, the gentleman who was do doing the moving, um, you know, of the furniture, he, you know, he even came down, you know, in his moving fee. So, um, you know, I don't know. It, it would just be nice to get this project started so we know, you know, where we are, you know, with the bids. So, 
I will follow up on that tomorrow just to see when that's taking place. Um, again, with the um, waiver for the cafe, I followed up January 18th and also yesterday. So it's just, you know, waiting for people um, to respond. And finally, uh, well, not finally, but um, I spoke to Lori, Lori, correct me, Bill Hayden, Poet Laureate, v just a very nice man. Um, so, you know, we, we are looking to seek the next Norwalk um, Poet Laureate. Woohoo! It's yeah. time! <laughs> <laughs> and no good deed goes unpunished, so well, you'll be helping us, I hope. I would be happy to. Um, so we're looking to meet and just talk about, you know, process and next steps. We're looking to meet next week. There's a woman who was on the panel um, to see the new Connecticut Poet Laureate. She you know, said that she would join us as well. So I'm um, really, I'm trying to get in touch with the, the, the Connecticut Poet Laureate as well. Um, but um, I think we'll be in a good place. Bill with Laurel, um, I think we'll be fine. And are we planning some kind of an event? Um, I would love to. That's um, something that I that I've been mulling around. We I'd like to have actually a poetry contest and have one where it's you know people are just reading because that's what you know some people do. But then also have another like performance, almost like a slam, mm -hmm. um, you know, with different judges because it's a whole totally different type of thing. Mm -hmm. Have them together so that people can you know um, see poetry that may be outside of their purview or their comfort zone. Um, just to have them together and, and have um, judge. I would just love to pull out more poets um, in Norwalk. When I first moved here, I got the feeling that people thought poetry was sort of like a poor person's craft. And now, the, oh yeah, and I was totally offended because that was, um, I don't know if I've ever told you, but I, I, won, I won a first place juried award um, at the Connecticut <laughs> and on the arts. So I love poetry. And it was, um, yeah, people, you know, people loved art, but not so much poetry. But I think having the Poet Laureate, um, I think that's changed it with some of the things that you've done. And it would be great just to open it up, you know, a little bit more to like the people who do the performance poetry. My thought was a, a press release and that might help you oh, to sure. get this, the next thing, you know, because we got a lot of good press, you know, on the, on the last picture opportunity. For and sure. the more we get you know, on the front page or the second page or whatever, the back page of the hour, you know, and um, channel 12 or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, the better it is for us. For sure. Yeah. And the, and the more people you have apply, the better. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. it would be really yeah. nice after a white woman and a white man to have a person of color in that position in this town. So um, if we can find a way to reach out we kind of widely across the community, I think. That's yeah. So um, there is also um, Mariana Medrano. She's actually, she's Dominican. And she's actually the person that kind of pushed me out there to get my poetry out there. I was thinking about maybe having her, you know, come down to and just kind of, you know, have just different people at the table and then just see, you know, where the, where the, you know, where things fall. But I also and I'm talking about two different events. The first thing, announcing the new Poet Laureate, yeah. and then introducing this program that you're going to have. It gives you an opportunity to, to get people to participate. For you sure. know, it's it's PR to get it going. For sure. So and not one event, you know, one small one and then the big splash. For sure. Yeah, and you want to get people out, right? Pull them out of their hobbit hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Away from COVID. To do that. I think we would get a different audience um, by yeah. having the slam or the performance. So I'm I'm all for a slam. I like I love poetry. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> great. Yeah. But but and also but, like we could do something creative on social media to get people out too. The social media is terrific, by the way. It's like we can talk about that another time. But I think whoever's doing it is is really, you know. Well, I think Library Without Borders, their leadership has been tremendous. Yeah. I've seen a great change and change, and there's yeah. a lot of um, followers. I mean, so, um, and you would definitely get a different um, generation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it was one year I think Mary participated where we had people record their poetry or record mm -hmm. themselves reading it and we put it on social media. I yeah. think that was maybe just before COVID. Um, I think it was. It, but he he's very much into poetry. Who? So he's a big the mayor. Oh, the mayor. Okay. Oh. Get him right. a poetry so, you know, yeah, well, he pushed the whole poet oh. Gloria thing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Laura, if you remember that. Oh, part yeah. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. Well, let me know what I can do. That, we, that poetry I walk think, thing that we had right years back. Was fun. I'm sorry. Yes, that poetry walk thing on, on, uh, on Wall Street, mm -hmm. was yeah, during really poetry month, very, very, very successful and a lot of fun. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. If we could revisit that, Bob Walsh and I were talking about that. We were looking to either do that. Uh, Bob Walsh used to be on um, the board of Nancy on Norwalk, and he also contributed um, what, ten thousand dollars at one point to the library a few years back. Um, just a, you know, very quiet man, but very supportive. So he and I met and we had talked about um, the walk um, and even maybe trying to revamp some things. So um, yeah. so that is in the in the, the making. Good. And finally, so staffing, um, there are quite a few um, of our um, positions that are posted um, there was an issue with one of our positions. Um, there was a question. I gave them some the revamp, the same revamp that you all received for the acquisitions position, but that was not. Um, they posted um, something different, so hopefully they will reopen it for the people who may have been deterred um, because of what the description was, and maybe reopen it so that we can get. Um, you know, another set of, of, of people. Is this yeah. is this the accounting piece? No, I, no, no, no. no. The accounting, I have to say, um, they've already referred those people, so that'll be a blessing because that's something that they do all day, just that. So with me trying to do that, plus my other duties has been a headache. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that one, they have referred people, so I'm excited and that's, you know, spoken to some people who already have the experience in the city, um, you know, that, that are interested. So that's that's really nice. But it's important that we get the acquisitions position correct. Um, some of it I just feel was a, was a rush job, but, um, you know, they're out there. But I just want to make sure that we're posting the right positions so that we're getting the right candidates. What about the custodians? Yeah. Wait, I just want to say that that the positions like I have seen them um sorry before the custodian um I've seen them I've posted seen them. like on fo Facebook city is posting them on Facebook on LinkedIn they're really using um a lot of I mean I'm sure they're posting them in lots of different venues and that's but, great as long as they're as valuable. the right position the right Yeah, 100%. That's because then what happens now we're opening up we're opening again we're opening again and um so yeah I'm, I'm grateful that that they're out there but i just need a little more fidelity yeah. yes yeah. sir come in is there anything about the associate director or assistant director it's the library assistant all of those um have posted so it's the okay. library assistant, the branch manager um branch manager okay, okay. Well, yeah did you get my my text oh I, i'm going to be here late all right. So I'll call it out. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. That's Mark. Okay. Um, so um, with the custodian, I've not really heard, I've not heard anything yet. And we definitely need um, that position filled. Oh, wait, no, I, I take that back. I think they, um, I think I may, I know we spoke about them posting it. It may be posted. I just haven't had a chance to look yet. Is that for one or two people? They they opened it up for one person. To replace the, Mark. Yeah. Is that right? Is so that so I, let me just explain. So yes, there will be one for now. And then we did put that position in for a third custodian um, for 24-25. Right. Okay. 
So we haven't lost sight of that. Okay. But it's really difficult. Our part-timer who is just, he's phenomenal. Um, he was on vacation for a little over a week. Um, we have a, a other custodian is going out for surgery. Um, you know, so these are things that have, we've been bringing up. Yes, he's going out for surgery on the 21st. So these are things, you know, we brought it up. We gave scenarios. We gave the, the footprint of the building. So I don't know, you know, what else. Only thing we may have to do is like, you know, come up with a schedule. We close the main library one day and close um, Sono another day. Because there's no way one person is going to be able to cover the buildings. And if we have a full-timer who's going out um, for leave, and he deserves it. This man works so hard. He covers both buildings. Um, whenever somebody's out, you know, he's just, you know, a pleasure to work with. He doesn't look at one building as better than the other building. He just is a pleasure to work with, but yeah. he deserves his time. So it's going to be difficult. So I will be making some recommendations um, next week. You know, um, if I haven't heard anything back, I will be making some recommendations as to how we're going to handle this. Um, oh, uh, Sherelle, I hope we'll have a chance as a board to weigh in before you close any building. I mean, I don't think oh, it's fair. Oh, no, these will just be recommendations. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to, pun to punish the customers. It's not fair to punish the customers, Alex. Of course not. That would be a last resort. Right. But so we should talking about mobilize this the board to impress upon Lamont and the mayor that this has to get done. For it's sure. been a couple of years. I mean, my God. For sure. So no, that would be my last resort. Who wants to do that? So, but I, you know, I have no choice. I, if I don't have the staff. Like I've been going and opening up buildings. I am working twelve hours a day, almost six days a week. Yeah. So, well, you shouldn't. You resource. shouldn't do that. So, we have to get the city to step up and take its responsibilities. Nope, I appreciate that, and and I just want to go on the record. That would be my last resort, but I have to be realistic. So I'll make I'll just have to make the recommendation and we'll take so it. I, I'm just um is there can I mean until we get like a another full time person can can guardian? So I, they tried that. I'm not sure exactly what happened with that. Um I don't think they were ready. Um it's not that they weren't willing, but I guess the their men just do certain duties. I mean, I think it certainly help with the opening and closing, but, you know, we pride ourselves on having, you know, our bathrooms clean, clean twice a day, garbage is empty twice a day, um, you know, they're on call if we have emergencies, um, you know, they're doing setups, they're doing, you know, room booking setups, so our guys do quite a bit. So that's it for my report. A lot of news. A lot of news. Um, okay, so I think that's it. I are we ready to yeah. adjourn? And are we on? are we scheduled to have a foundation meeting or not? We are. Okay. I move to adjourn. And uh, see you on the next screen. Yeah, I don't think I got a Zoom for foundation. It's the same, but I can resend it. It's the same every every month, but I'll resend oh, it. Yeah, okay. Okay, doke. See, you, see you guys soon. Okay, bye-bye. Second. Nobody second. Oh, right. sorry. Second. All Thank in favor. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming everybody's all in favor, yes? Yeah. <laughs> all in favor. Sorry. Okay. We're just Bye-bye. Okay.